people, or at least a lot of people I know, I grew up in a Christian home, though I wouldn't say it was a traditional Christian home. And we were kind of in and out of the church all while I was growing up. We definitely always went to Easter, always went to Christmas Eve, but never really made church a priority. Um, and it wasn't something that we really openly talked about. Um, it wasn't something that I felt like I could talk about with people. I didn't know what it meant to be a Christian. I was just kind of along for the ride. And I would say it wasn't until middle school that I really started kind of understanding what being a Christian was. Um, my older sister had been through a lot and um, came home to live with us after college and she started a Bible study with my friends and that was the first time I had ever had like that open fellowship and community with people um, and it was life-changing for me being able to talk to my friends about those things. Um, however, we didn't end up staying friends. The Bible study kind of fell apart when my friend group fell apart and I was okay with that. I really didn't care. Um, God wasn't a priority in my life at that point. And as I was going through high school, I kind of went to church, thought I knew what it meant, still didn't really know. Um, I questioned my beliefs a lot. I'm a very analytical and logical person, and to me, it just didn't make sense. Like, there was no proof. No one could give me all the answers I needed. Um, there was just times where I was like, God, like, talk to me, and he didn't respond, so. I just assumed he wasn't real. Um, I was going through through high school, going through some really rough stuff with my family. Um, most of people who know me know I have an adopted sister, and I would say those were the most traumatic years of my life. Um, the process of adopting her and having her foster sisters live with us, or having her sisters or my foster sisters live with us, and having three new people in the house, developing a relationship with my parents when I felt like I really didn't have one um, was really hard for me because I was probably it was between like 12 and 15 that all of this was going on. Um, so I just couldn't understand why God would put me through that. I was so insanely jealous of my foster sisters for the relationship they had with my dad. Um, I had never really had a relationship with my dad and I felt so unwanted. <laughs> I was just like, if you could have a relationship with them, like, why don't you choose me? Um, and I took it out on God. <laughs> I couldn't understand why I was being put through that. Um, so as high school went on, I was just kept saying, oh, when I get to college, I'll focus on my faith. Um, I really put it on the back burner because I, I didn't want to focus on it. I didn't want to have a relationship with God. I no longer cared. I was going through so much um, in my teen years that I I didn't care anymore. Everything changed for me when I came to Iowa State and found the Salt Company. My first week of classes, um, they do a on-campus mission. So they come through all the residence halls and start knocking on doors and inviting people to come do things with them. There was a sand volleyball night and inviting us to the Salt kickoff. Um, and I found my connection group leaders, uh, Abra and Lauren, and they were just so encouraging and just really instrumental in my faith um, and helped me answer questions and tell me that it was okay if I didn't know, that if I didn't know all the answers, that that was normal. Um, Lauren was a newly found Christian, so hearing things from her perspective was really cool and just getting to know all the girls in my group really helped me my freshman year and I would say that's why I was successful at Iowa State, because of that group of girls. Um, but it wasn't until the February of my freshman year that I would say God completely changed my life. So the message that changed my life um, was in Acts 17. And it was about who we are, where we're going, why God put us on the earth. And at the end of the message, our pastor gave us two ultimatums. We can either mock Jesus or fall at his feet. We can either think that the miracles he's done are absolutely insane and could have never happened, or we praise him for the things he's done. Those are the only two options. You can't just be halfway in with Jesus. You can't just think, oh, he was a great man and he did amazing things, but I don't believe in his message. There's no way to do that because you either think he was crazy for the insane miracles he was performing and that people were crazy were following him or you fall at his feet and that was something that I had never thought of um, 
I needed the ultimatum. I needed to make the choice. So that night I chose to fall at his feet. I pursued Jesus as my savior and I started reading my Bible and really getting into the word. Um, and I actually felt like I needed to film this then. So that was a year ago. And I, I let things get in the way. I put things before God and I really, I turned the other direction. I turned away from God again, even though I fully believed in him, I kept putting things first. Um, and that leads me to the second thing that pushed me to follow Christ. And that was this fall retreat for the salt company this past October. So in my notes from the fall retreat, um, it really talks about what is the line that stands between you and Christ? What is the bucket that you're filling instead of letting Christ into your life? And really like, what, what do you need to give up to be closer with Christ? And I was an emotional wreck that weekend. I felt like they were talking directly to me and that I had been doing nothing right. Um, so I decided to step over the line and give my life to Christ. So I got baptized this last November and it was the scariest and most emotional thing I've ever done um, and the most fulfilling thing I've ever done. I really have issues with being vulnerable with people. That's not something I'm used to. I hate opening up to people. Um, so to get up in front of my congregation and share my story and share why I believe in Christ and break down in tears before getting baptized by some of my best friends was so hard, but exactly what I needed to do. Um, so I'm going to put that footage here. My name is Kennedy. I'm a sophomore at Iowa State. I grew up claiming I was a Christian, but not knowing what it really meant. I was falling in and out of the church and blaming God for the negative things happening in my life. I was falling. I found the salt company my freshman year and my heart changed. I was sitting in this room when a message was shared that changed my life. We have two options. We can either worship him or mock him. We either think he's crazy for all the things he does or we praise him and fall at his feet. Today I'm making the choice to follow him in obedience and praise him. saying I have the best relationship with Christ, but I'm saying I'm trying. Um, I have amazing friends that keep me accountable, a community here at Iowa State that believes the same things I do and pushes me to dive deeper in my relationship with Christ. And if you want that, if you need someone to help keep you accountable, reach out. I'd love to help you, even though I am a wreck myself. I highly recommend if you're at Iowa State joining the Salt Company or even just listening online to their podcast. That's been really helpful for me. Leave any comments or any questions you have for me later. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.